to the Super Speedway. Welcome to episode 316 of the Super Speedway Podcast, recorded Monday, April 15th, 2024. I'm your host, Eric Young, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, James Cush. James, how's it going today? It is going on a Monday. On a Monday, again. yeah. That's all right. Two Mondays in a row. Every time, I know, every time I hear the word Monday, it throws me off. But no, we're here, we're back, ready to roll. You can tell it's hockey playoff season. I'm always busy on Tuesdays now. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. That is there. That is a okay with me, my man. We are, uh, you are. <laughs> I feel like you are completely booked until when? August? Ah, uh, <laughs> September. I'll, I have to get through Memorial Day week, weekend or that the week after Memorial Day. That's all I'm thinking about right now because I have. I don't know if we've talked about it on the podcast, but I'm the official photographer for the CHL's Memorial Cup and will involve like full days of working that entire week um, doing photos. And then I've got in the midst of that, I've got team photos I'm doing for a, a, a baseball league. And also um, the first two, I think uh, CRA races are before that as well. So yeah, uh, all I'm thinking about right now is getting through the week after Memorial day. And then, then I can start thinking about the rest of the year, but <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, well, plus you're plus you're working full time doing this yes. thing. I'm like, yeah. how does he do it? How and the Saginaw Spirit is still playing, and I'm I literally have the game on right now next to me as they're on the road. Um, so probably a pretty good chance I'll be distracted during this podcast as one of the players just got checked on the boards really bad. So yeah, um, I'll do my best. Yeah. I'm going to be as professional as possible tonight. <laughs> I was in a work meeting today, and uh, today was the Boston Marathon, so I wanted to make sure. Oh I was, yeah, you know. I was paying attention to the Boston Marathon, which is one of my favorite events of the year. So I had that going on my phone <laughs> and I had the meeting pulled up and I'm, I'm just kind of like half listening to the meeting. And um, I, oh, man, I almost got busted. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I didn't get busted, but there I, there was a hesitation in my response to a question. And had I hesitated another two or three seconds, <laughs> I think I would have. I think I would have been busted pretty good, but that's okay. This world of remote work or remote meetings is difficult because it's really, really easy to do other stuff while you're pay so it should be paying attention to meetings. And it's oh, not just, I'm always I, doing it. Yeah. I'm not even talking about like stuff you're not supposed to be doing. It could just be other work you're doing and yes. you get called on and it's like, Oh, uh, uh, I wasn't paying attention. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Well, meetings are useless as in my, uh, well, yeah, my, <laughs> so that's true. I was working and well, I was technically, I was doing three things at once, which I shouldn't, I shouldn't be doing. Right. I should only be doing two things at once. I can't, I, I have a fishy. So I am not one of those people that's like, I'm a multitasker. No, I don't multitask. I am not yeah. capable of multitasking. If you are asking me to multitask or if I'm claiming I'm multitasking, I'm lying to you. There's no way I can do two things at the same time. <laughs> All the secrets are coming out on today's episode. Yeah. Yeah. All so, the truths. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's talk Texas Motor Speedway. James, we had a we had a, a an eventful weekend at a track that we were dreading going to. Um, really good weekend this weekend. Really yeah. Weekend. All around. Yeah. Uh, I mean, three. Three strong races, at least in some aspects. Uh, we'll break them all down here uh, going forward. But let's talk first about the Cup Series. Because, James, I put it in the notes, all is right with the world. The right. most popular driver, Chase Elliott, is a race uh -huh. winner once again. Dale Earnhardt Jr. fans celebrate. <laughs> he got he got it done. That whopping 42-race <laughs> winless streak is over. And Chase Elliott's a winner. The, the, the siren sounded in Dawsonville again, James. I saw a really funny video, and I, I my apologies, I can't, I don't have the credit for it, but it was just a guy yelling like a siren, <laughs> and uh, it's it said uh, it said I can't remember exactly what it said, but somewhere in Dawsonville, Georgia, and there was just this guy standing there screaming, and it kept it keeps going for like thirty seconds. It's pretty funny. I should have I should have sent it to you. But That's funny. That's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. The Dawsonville pool room was uh was a buzzing. <laughs> their boy, their boy got one. Um, and kind of, you know, with the way that race ended out with all those restarts, I mean, earned it yeah. pretty, you know, pretty well. But um, I, you know, the the question that is hasn't. So here, might, this might be a new segment, Eric. Okay. 
what question has annoyed James after the rape? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and this week's edition is, is Chase Elliott back? <laughs> and all I can think of is, well, he's still the third best driver on his own team. I don't, nothing's really changed, but yeah, he, he's back. He won. Here's my he's, argument to that. Um, he didn't go anywhere. He didn't go anywhere. He's not terrible. Yeah. Ugh. He missed the playoffs last year, but he missed a good chunk of the season too. If it wouldn't have been for that, he would have made the playoffs. Um, yeah, he was fine. And like he you was, said, he, you're, he you're not wrong either. He is the third best driver at Hendrick right now. That's a fact. That's an absolute it's fact. It's still the, it's still the case whether he wins this race or not. Now, right. does that mean he can hot. win the championship? Sure. Yeah. But oh, so yeah. can anybody oh, yeah. who qualifies. I tell you what. He's going into Talladega. I, yeah. I, he'll be good. He'll be good this week, this coming week too. Yeah. I mean, he's he's, you know, Chase. I know he's had a rough run here, but you know, a lot of really great drivers have had you know gaps in the resume at some point. Every really great driver has. Yeah, it's all, it happens, to, and sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't happen until the end. <clears throat> Jimmy Johnson, Tony Stewart, um, those does guys. Anybody remember two thousand for Dale Earnhardt? Oh yeah, not great, right? Right. <laughs> Outside of his Talladega, his yeah. you know, his incredible Talladega run. He yeah. was just back on the upswing when he died. I mean, he was at he, he was at, before that was a long losing streak. I think Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s, you know, obviously he's a Hall of Famer. He went how many years without winning a race? Four. Well, he had two of them. He had two really. Yeah, his he had two nasty ones. Yeah. Um. When, when he went to Hendrick, people thought he he never would have that problem, and um he kind of limped in and that was that was a tough that was a tough go but when he got with Latart, he uh he he rocketed back up and you know Look and, at martin this, Truex jr he's had three different careers yeah dale jarrett <laughs> dale jarrett had yeah. had a gap T in look his at terry career. labani yep yep so this happens to, to really yeah. good drivers and you know the one thing that hendrick motorsports has always been really really great about and they did it again here they stayed patient they didn't let one season of not and not even mediocrity. I mean, he was last year. He had one of the best average finishes in the sport. I think he was fit. He was fifth in the, in the sport in average finish on yeah. the year. So I'm not my, you know, not a terrible year at all, No, but they didn't blow it up. They didn't send Alan Gustafson somewhere, which they didn't all do, the fans wanted them to do, nope, which was the nope. dumbest idea. I know. Ever. I know you and I, I, I both talked about on this podcast, how yes. stupid that would be. But, you know, Hendrick Motorsports has three cars with incredible pairings. And, and Chase winning this weekend or not doesn't change my opinion on that. Chase and Allen yeah. are one of the best combos in the sport. You've got, you know, everything going on with the five team. That team, solid ever since they've gotten together. And the same thing with the 24. Those guys are, are all top notch. And then you saw it this week too, Eric. Chase Elliott's crew, pit crew, the va the fastest Four yep. tire pit stop in the history of the sport again. What yep. was it under nine seconds? Eight point seven some seconds. Yeah. Just I mean, again, you, eight, when 8. you don't 4. win four nine. By the way, eight, they, well, that's even better than eight point seven. <laughs> um, you you take it for granted when you don't win for a long period of time, and and I know Chase got that monkey off his back. Um, you know, this could, this could be a dangerous team. Yeah. You know, they, they could win a handful of races now. Well, would you, um, I mean, honestly, right would, would you count anybody out at Hendrick? Like even Alex Bowman, I realize Alex Bowman's not going to win a championship, but would it shock you if he did? Would it shock you if Alex Bowman made the final four? I don't think it would Alex shock Bowman, you. It, it, no, he's still the, I don't know what to do with him guy. Right. That has, that has never changed with me. He could win five races and he could win zero for the rest of his career. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, I mean that. That's and that's it. If these guys get hot, you know, um, look out. They're they're going to be they're going to be tough to beat. And you know, Chase was not good at this early part of this race. No, they were on the long pit strategy. Exactly, and I, that was overlooked by. I, of course, I listened to Teardown and I listened to Denny's podcast today. But yep, that yep. was overlooked. That he was the first one to do the long stretch. I mean, I drivers tried it later, and, and it he, worked later too. Yeah, but that's how got Chase the got there. <laughs> yeah, he got the break, and and Allen said post race that they were coming in, and the caution flew, and he yeah. got a huge break, which set up the rest of their day. And, and track position was so vital. I mean, this was such mm -hmm. a uh, this was a volatile race yeah, as far was. as you know 
track position and guys wrecking and, and coming and going. There was a lot of coming and going all race long. And, and I think once Larson lost his tire, um, things were things were kind of thrown up in the air and, and you, it was kind of anybody's race at that point. Right. Um, you, we, we back to that conversation about is chase Elliott back. I want to point to the giant elephant in the room, which is third place was William Byron. Here's the guy who I'm calling it the year of William Byron. He's still right there. Chase Elliott wins yeah. a race. Byron's still right there. Like he, yeah. they can't get away from him. I mean, yeah. Had there been another restart, yeah, I would have. Yeah, he would have probably been all over him. Yeah, yeah. more than likely. Yep. I mean, he he had second for a little while, right? <laughs> yeah, he. <laughs> then Brad he got the NASCAR gave it to Brad. Well, yeah, when uh, he uh, he wrecked the one off his nose, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it slowed him down yeah. a little bit. But yeah, those uh, those cars spinning off your front bumper will slow you down occasionally. Yeah, they'll slow you down just a little bit. <laughs> By the way, I'm not, and I'm not doing a. Th- I'm I'm not going to do the thing, Eric. Yeah, I'm not going to do the thing. But it's really hard for me not to enjoy that. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask you about that because I mean, <laughs> not not whether you enjoyed it or not. But what did you think of that incident? I mean, was that? I think uh, honestly, and again, I'm trying not to do. I'm, I'm trying to be as fair as possible. I, I I think Ross got out of got out of line and woed up, and I, I just think by I don't think there was any. I don't think it was anybody's fault. It's it's the last um, lap. You're not lifting. No, and that's Byron that's what it coming. is. Is Byron's not going to yeah. lift. If that happened yeah. on lap twenty, there's not a wreck because Byron lifts. But you're not you don't lift yeah. on the last lap. You can't. No, and Ross Ross wouldn't lift. I know I no. know Ross is mad. Um, but Ross wouldn't have lifted either. So yeah. I ninety percent of the drivers out there aren't lifting in that situation. So Yeah. No, I I didn't see anything wrong with what happened there. It I'll tell you what, at on the first view of it live, it looked like, oh my god, he just wrecked him. But no, yeah. he, Ross yeah, lifted, and down. there's there's nothing you can do. Byron and, couldn't get around him, and he's not going to lift to get around him. And, so. and Ross didn't stay up the track; he right. was coming down. It, it's again, it, you know, I'm I'll try to be partial. People know you listen to this podcast enough; you know how <laughs> I feel about Ross, and you know how I feel about Byron. So it's I'm trying to, uh, you know, I'd like to say that if it, the roles were reversed, I'd feel the same way, uh, but that's uh, tough. <laughs> So I really do think it was an in- racing incident, but you can call me on my BS if you want. That's fine. Yeah, I totally understand. <laughs> I've, you know, I have built, uh, I have, I have built my, uh, built my house on, on the shoestring that I have. So, uh, <laughs> you go, you go ahead, <laughs> you go ahead and take it down if you have to. No, that was a racing incident. Like I said, I mean, yeah. you could, you're probably put more, you put the blame on Byron. He's the one who hit him, but. Again, it's the last lap. Oh, yeah, lap. the you, car behind always. Yeah. You know, you're not going to lift. Nobody's going to lift there. If you lift there, then you shouldn't not be racing in, in the Cup Series. Not in today's NASCAR. No. Nobody, nobody lifts there. No. Nobody. No. Nope. Um, I mean, it's just like, you know, when Ross spun, he spun in the middle of the track and the caution came out. But none of those guys are lifting then either. I mean, if no, if, no. if he's in their way, they're hitting him. And that's, that's and what you see was... at super speedways when you get the big wrecks at the end is nobody's lifting. Yeah, and, and the race was over at that point. Yeah, because Chase was Chase was gone. Yeah, so there, nothing was changing at that point. The white flag was out, and uh, I, I part of me, there's a part of me way deep down that says, "Man, NASCAR couldn't throw that caution fast enough <laughs> <laughs> to make sure they locked that in." But he was gone. It didn't make no, a difference. There it didn't make a difference. The race was over. The only way that that race would have changed is if Chase went into the turn and just blew a tire and hit the wall. I mean, exactly. there's there's no way that anything else different. No, would and have it didn't happen. So no. no, he he won fair and square. Yeah. So. Yep, he 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 battled him off, man. Brad was trying like heck with fresher tires. Yeah, uh, and I was pulling for Brad, man. I I wanted to see it. Another one who like... didn't have a good day, but you know managed yeah, to have I a know. good finish. I know, and that's you know again he got some track position and and got on the right strategy, and all of a sudden there he was, and yeah. I and I was like, man, he's really his race to lose there at the end. After uh, again, this race was so wild, like. <laughs> There was a point where Reddick had this thing sewn up and his pit crew let him down again. And it just kind of ebbed and flowed. And all of a sudden there's Brad and, um, you know, Suarez is up in there. It's it's like, holy cow, man, this, this is pretty wild here. So, yeah, yeah, I, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed that whole last. I mean, the whole third stage I thought was really interesting. Well, let's talk about this race in general. This is a good point to do it. Um, let's uh, let's pretend we're Jeff and Jordan for a moment. 
Okay. And uh, was this a good race, James? What, what do you what do you think of Texas as a race? I liked it. Yeah. No, I, this was a good race. This was uh this was um the best Texas race I I've seen in a while. Long so time. I I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like I'm struggling with it because from a racing standpoint, I don't think it was a good race. Yeah. Um, Denny talked about it in his podcast and I agree with him. You, you couldn't pass. It was all track position. And the, the difference is, is that it was chaotic and it was unpredictable and you didn't know who was going to overstep their bounds and wreck. And, and Denny made a comment like that people, people want to see a good race. They don't just want to see a bunch of wrecks. And I disagree with that statement. Um, mm -hmm. and I know I, I'm, I'm the self-proclaimed, like, I like accidents. I like crashes. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. We've talked about this on the podcast before, but I am not one of those NASCAR fans that claims that they don't like the crashes. So to me, I would rather have a race that has crashes, but is hard to pass in single file. And one guy dominates the race, but there's cautions mm -hmm. and there's crashes and there's excitement. Um, that's why I like the old Bristol. It sucked mm -hmm. to race on. You couldn't pass people. You had to bump them out of the way, but there were crashes, right? Um, there was contact. There were people getting mad with each, mad at each other. Um, that's what I liked about this. I, so in the end, I agree. I think it was a good race. I don't think it's what, I don't think it's what NASCAR wants, but, and it's certainly not what the drivers want, but I was entertained. It kept me entertained for 400 miles. Um, and it, yeah. it certainly is not, I mean, let's let's not even worry. Let's not even think about Texas right now. Let's fix the short tracks. Those need help. Texas is fine the way it is at this point. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I know people want to tear the built tear the place down and start over, but, uh, Bianchi still I, wants I, it to be a short track. He wants to piss off all those people in those condos out in turn two. I, Eric, we are in a, what's so funny. Uh, this is the funniest thing that we, that we have going in NASCAR right now is for years and years, we were so sick of mile and a half and <laughs> they are the best racing in yeah. the sport right now. Even Texas. Yeah. You know, that was a good solid day. I, I, I will stand by that. It was a good day. In my opinion, it was just, um, these mile and a half, they, the cars are just so hard to drive, you know, and, and Jimmy Johnson says, said as much this week too. I know we'll talk about him in a little bit, but, mm -hmm. um, it's ju it just produces just really fluid racing that is, you know, kind of pure in a, in a sense. Um, well, Denny explained it on a podcast and he's probably right. And I hate to keep crediting Denny. I know you're a giant Denny Hamlin that's fan. Fine. So he's fine. He's got his agenda and I have mine. We're but, <laughs> but he, he made the point that this car doesn't drive well on single groove racetracks. And the reason that mile and a half are good right now is that you can get out from behind the car in front of you. Yep. Yep. And get air and, and make moves that way. And that's why the short tracks suck, because you can't do that. There's not room to do that. Um, Denny wants them to why, why he, Denny thinks Denny wants them to get rid of the PJ one that's still left over in one and two, because he thinks they can run up wide. I don't want them to use that half of the track, to be honest, no, because I want it to be treacherous. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think I think you fix turn one and two at Texas. You ruin Texas again. Yeah, um, just leave it alone now. Yeah. Yep. Um, he also is upset with the bump in three and four, which of course he is because he crashed because of it. Um, <laughs> but I love the bump. These tracks shouldn't be paper smooth. I mean, it, it shouldn't be like driving on ice. It should be like driving on a bumpy, worn out racetrack. Yeah. So put some jumps in there if you have to. I mean, that makes it entertaining. Those yep. guys, everybody went through that spot. And yes, Jimmy Johnson wrecked there. Yes. Denny Hamlin wrecked there. Yes. Michael McDowell wrecked there, but Hey man, you know, a lot of other guys didn't. Yeah. Know? Oh yeah. Yep. So, um, I don't know. I, it just, again, this Texas is going to be one of those tracks that it's not gonna be what the drivers like, but if the yep. fans like it and there were people there, man, James, that has a great crowd for Texas. Yeah, I know. And I was surprised by that, especially yeah. after Coda was, you know, just a couple weeks ago, it's very one race, that they... one race, man. Yep. One race at a one track. Race on your track. Yep. One race at Richmond. You fix their attendance problem there too. Let's let's do it, NASCAR. Yeah, I mean Michigan. You know, one of, one of our favorite tracks. We you know for years we were like, man, don't take our race away. But you know, I, I expect it'll be a good crowd. Yeah, I expect yep. it'll be a good crowd, and the racing will be better. Yeah. 
The racing's always better. The, we just the... need a race to run on race day at Michigan. Well, yeah. <laughs> no more rainouts. Yeah, please. <laughs> please, God, no more rainouts. I don't care this year because I'm not going, so it can rain. <laughs> oh, <boy>. Ah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, let's talk about Jimmy Johnson, James. Um, uh, we could, yeah, let's... Can we not? I don't want to pile on Jimmy. Well, are, I'm not going to pile on him. I'm not going to pile on him. I'm not going to pile on him. Let's be nice. I am let's not going to, nice. to use this time to reiterate the fact that I didn't want to see Jimmy Johnson come back and struggle. And he is. Um, but no, I mean, it's just a tough weekend for Jimmy. And Jimmy referenced after the race, um, or, or I, I think it was after the race, or maybe it was beforehand, he talked about the fact that he, he struggles with this car because it drives differently. And you drive off. He, he made a career driving off the right rear. And this car drives off the right front. And it's true. I mean, if I've heard plenty of people talk about how Jimmy was Jimmy drove a loose race car. And mm -hmm. with the old race car, a loose race car was fast until you lost control of it. But it was easier to maintain control because you had that side force and you could get sideways. And this car doesn't allow you to get sideways. So right. um, it shows a difference. I, I wonder why. I mean, I get that it's the Cup Series, but I wonder why Jimmy doesn't just come back and like run the Xfinity Series or something like that car is more compared to what he's used to. Um, right. Probably more fun to drive. Then you can you get Sunday off. You know, yeah, I don't, I don't know, you know, and, and I'll, and I'll stand by what I've said and I, I, it's still going to take a lot for me to change my mind. Well, he's the goat and he him. can do whatever the hell he wants to do. Exactly. And that's, that's kind of where I stand. Like if Jimmy wants to go out there and, and, and just putz around, yeah. um, go, I mean, go putz around. I, he's not hurting. He, he's set in stone, but now I will say though, at least they aren't creating week, champions provisionals and stuff for him to get in the field. Like they did for DW right. and Richard Petty. Right. Well, and he is going to Dover next, yeah. and I'm just curious to see what that looks like. Me too. I mean, does he have, you know, I, I don't know what he's got left in the tank, but does he have like a little magic at Dover? I, I'm just, I'm <laughs> going to be, I, it's just a subplot to me. Like, can Jimmy Johnson go out and run top 15 at Dover? Maybe. Maybe. I, I'd like to see it. Let's see if he can do it. Why yeah. not? You know? Yeah. I, I don't know. And, and again, I said I wasn't going to come on here and, and re reiterate the fact that I didn't want him to come back. I'm fine with what he's doing. Like I said, it does. He's a go. He's not. I know. He's not tarnishing his career. It, it doesn't does feel like that way. No. It, 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 I mean, yeah, it, it sucks to see him yeah. struggle. But, you know, again, it's not. It's just a subplot of his career. I mean, he struggled in IndyCar really bad. Yeah. Um, but then we went to the, you know, we went to some ovals. Iowa mm -hmm. stands out to me, and he had a little magic. Yeah, just a little bit of magic, and and he'll show you that from time to time. That's what you got to appreciate. It's not going to be there every race, but every once in a while, he's going to give you something. And you I know, still think he'll give you something. You That's know like, what I appreciate about it, James? What's that? Dale Jr. talked about the reason he didn't go and race late models earlier was because he didn't want to show up and look silly. Yep. Yep. Jimmy don't care. No, he and doesn't care. That's what I respect that he is. Yeah. He's willing to go and start from scratch in a series like he did with IndyCar. He's willing yep. to come back in a series that he is the king of and look foolish. And he's fine with that. Okay, great. Yep. Good for him. Yeah. And you know, Tony Stewart's doing some of that too. in, in the NHRA, yeah. like he's over there and he, I'm like last year, I was like, really, is he going to do that? And, and there was some times where he wasn't very good, but he, you know, and, and this year, uh, now that he's racing with the big dogs, um, he's struggling a lot. And uh, I'm just curious to see if he's got, you know, what he can do if, if he can put a full season together. But yeah, but yeah, we'll see. It's like, uh, you know, this weekend's a really great comparison. Um, Tiger Woods played in the Masters and it was ugly and <laughs> his body, his body's broken. He doesn't have <laughs> he just can't. He just can't even he has a hard time walking, you know, with yeah. the things that his body's been through. But man, on Friday and Thursday and Friday, when he was trying to make the cut, that was there was a little magic there. And that's what you got to expect out of Jimmy Johnson. He's you know, he, you got to got to look for the moments. And that's that's what I that's what I'll try to remember as he continues on. Yeah. Um, Chase Elliott locks himself into the playoffs. Uh, we will not have a playoff or Chase Elliott list playoff. Uh, this season um, joins the 
five other drivers who have locked themselves into the playoffs at this point. William Byron, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell, and Daniel Suarez all locked in as well. Um, let's talk about the race, James. Other people stand out to you. Um, we mentioned Brad Keselowski with a second place finish. Great day for him. Uh, Chase Briscoe comes home in sixth. Uh, Daniel Suarez, fifth place. I mean, I know he's got the win in Atlanta, but um, it's a good run for him. And yep. how about, I, I know what strategy got him there, but Austin Dillon, Kyle Busch, two cars in the top 10 for RCR this weekend. Yeah, that was a uh, recovery for <laughs> for Kyle, especially for Kyle. But yeah, no, um, they took advantage of some strategy, like you said, and, and were able to get there. Um, you know, they kind of did the opposite of what Bubba was trying to do. Um, and I know Bubba got caught up in some stuff, but the... I feel like where I feel like the 2311 cars kept giving it away. Um, other teams were able to strike. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, the, you could have told me either the 45 or the 23 probably could have won this race and they slipped mm -hmm. and didn't, didn't get the job done. Um, you know, other teams kind of elevated themselves a little bit. I mean, Carson Hosevar P 10 best finish ever best finish for him. Top 10 really cool story. Um, you know, like Ty Gibbs, like, again, another guy I felt like, man, he's going to be really fast all day. And, and same thing with Martin Truex Jr. They just, you, you've got to be able to take advantage. And that's and that's what the, the three and the eight did. That was a really strong end of the day for those guys. That They were nowhere to be seen, and there they were at the end. Then that's what you want to see. To go back to the Chase Elliott is the third best driver at Hendrick theme, um, this race was Kyle Larson's race until he lost a wheel. Yeah, what a bummer. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, I know. Yeah, he was he was much faster than everybody. Ty Gibbs, you know, the funny thing, too, I don't know if you – did you catch this during the race, what happened to Ty Gibbs? I can't remember now. Remind PRN – well, I was listening to PRN. I think PRN probably got it, and maybe Fox didn't. Fox might have. I don't know. Uh, Ty Gibbs went into the pits on that, that, that early cycle and came out – I think he was running second. And the caution came out. And he was called back down pit road by NASCAR because the hub uh, at the on the end of the pit gun uh -huh. came oh, off. Oh yeah, they and did stuck talk about it to on the tire. Fox. Okay, I was wondering. They if either Fox talked, talked about, about it on Fox or I saw it on Twitter. I can't remember which. Well, this was all over on PRN. So I think he got nabbed for equipment leaving the leaving the pit. But they, he was racing the car. That's crazy. With with the end of the pit gun stuck to the to. His, <laughs> to the hub of his wheel. Oh, you know what? They didn't mention on TV. Uh, they talked about on tear now. Oh, okay. All right. That they came back yeah. in to remove it. I, I heard Mark uh, Mark Arrow, I think, had it. See, uh, they said on tear down that it wasn't that they didn't say that he was called in. They said that they came in to remove it. So it wasn't an issue on a future well, pit stop. Yeah. PRN said NASCAR called him okay. back in when they figured it well, out. I believe so I, we'll so. take it for what it is. Yeah. Take it for what it is. But still yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I Yeah. I just thought that was crazy. I had I have not seen that before. And I don't know if it's because these pit stops are getting so fast that the car took off and it spun it off. Right. I don't know. It's really crazy. Hmm. That's the first time I've seen that happen before. The fact that it stayed on while right. he's up, up to full speed is pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I was like, I was shocked. That whole thing kind of shocked me. Um, if I, I realize that one finished second, but if you're Ford, like, are you panicking at this point? I think they're just trying to get to Phoenix. Yeah, I don't know. Well, who they're, they're else not is, good on mile and a half. Let me re, let me ask you this: Who yeah. else is winning besides Gibbs and Hendrick? That's, that's because, true. That's true. I mean, you know, I don't know. Blaney was pretty fast. I know he got caught up in some some crap and it wrecked his day, hit the wall. Caught um, up in some crap or got run over by by uh, Ryan Priest. Well, <laughs> Ryan Priest, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ryan Which Priest credit like credit NASCAR and the fact that they have the cameras in the car because we actually got a replay of it thanks to them, not Fox. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, did Fox I know. catch an accident this weekend? I, I think they feel like they few. missed every single one of them. Well, I listened to the first two stages on, like I said, I was listening on PRN. No, the first you got, two a, stages, you got so probably a much better to, broadcast. Yeah, those guys do a good job. Yeah. Um, I want to call out one. Speaking of Ford. Yeah. A couple weeks ago, we had a. <laughs> We got into a debate over Josh Berry versus Chase Briscoe. Yeah. 
And Chase Briscoe since then has ripped off back to back top tens. I've already conceded that you were right. Like, do we need to keep? I just revis- thought it was funny. The one time you were right, see, we got to keep revisiting. Yeah, the it. one time. <laughs> yeah, the one time. I just think I just love trying to find little storylines like that, and that that one's funny to me. So I was wanted to bring that up. Um, before we move off the Cup Series, let's look at. In the show notes, uh, tobychristie.com has a nice graphic of the playoff grid um, for the Cup Series. I've included it in the show notes, and we will probably include it every week as long as he keeps doing it. Um, tef- definitely credit to Toby Christie for doing it. But I want to look at, so these are the drivers outside looking in right now. They're, on, they're, they're outside of the bubble. Um, Kyle Busch, of course, he's tied with Joey Logano, 16th and 17th. So Kyle Busch is out. Brad Keselowski is one point out. Eric Jones, 32, 38 points out. John Hunter Nemechek, 57 points out. Those are the four that are close by. Um, anybody surprise you there or further outside, James? Or are we kind of like, yeah, that kind of makes sense? Uh, everybody makes sense to me. Um, Kyle Busch and Brad falling out like they have is concerning, yeah. but not unexpected. Expected. We don't expect Eric Jones to point his way in, right? We expect he's got a win to get in. He's got a win, but I'm I'm happy happy to see him kind of in there. Yeah, you know, he's kind of in a his group all by himself. If he can keep that up, just stay in striking distance, and maybe somebody will come back. To yeah, you. except that every time somebody wins, that bubble moves. Well, and Bowman finished what? What did he finish on uh, Sunday? Uh, he finished thirty seventh. Yeah. There so, you go. I mean. You know, that might be up for grabs. Chase Briscoe's in, in right now. Like, those are the guys I'm kind of watching. Right. Um, It's hard to see who's going to fall out, though. Joey Logano is right on the edge, man. Well, he he's back in, right. basically. He was he was out to lunch. Yeah, this is going to be tight. You're going to need... I mean, you've got three champions right there. 16, 17, 18. Logano, Bush, and Keselowski. That's, that's five cup championships right there on the bubble. So that's going to be interesting to watch. We're nine races in of 26. So we're what about a third of the way through the regular season. Yep. Yep. So, you know, tell is coming. That's going to mix things up. Yeah. Well, that will shuffle it things for does. sure. It always does. Definitely. Yep. Uh, anything else worth discussing in this one, James, we had, we talked about lots of wrecks. Um, people just overstepping. Hamlin wrecked. Yeah, Hamlin wrecked going that wreck for the with win. Uh, um, Briscoe and Harrison Burton and Bubba Wallace was a weird one. Like that was a weird, that was a weird set of three guys to be in that position. Yeah. Um, let's go back to the let's go back to the Larson accident. So Larson spins with like one late too. Yeah, yeah. Let me hold on. Let me find it here because it was caution flag. Um. 11. Oh, okay. So it was Stenhouse. Stenhouse spins on lap 267. And we didn't go back green until 270. <laughs> and at that point, it wasn't an official green white checker, but there were two laps to go. What, what the hell are we doing? Why? I don't understand why we waited so long. <laughs> <laughs> to go back to green, like know, they, we could have easily gone back to green two laps earlier than that. Do you think NASCAR was just trying to let's let's have a good green white checker finish? Let's get out of here and have a good finish, or, or like what? I don't know, I don't know. It's not like he put a bunch of crap down on the track or anything. He spun out. I mean, I don't think yeah, he don't hit know. anything if I remember correctly. I don't know. I don't know. We're in a weird funk with the last couple of races here, where we've had three. I think we've had three straight green white checkered races, and now yeah. we're, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they're. I, I, and we've had long. I don't know. Cautions are so. Cautions are still inconsistent, and the and now we're seeing yeah, it's everything in, that involves the tower is inconsistent. Well, there's one consistent up there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. There's one consistent. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't. I don't know. It, it, there's just seems to be some questionable calls. Like every week, there's questionable calls one way or the other. Yeah. I well, especially when it. they come when the when the when there's as many, when there's many cautions as there were in this race, like we were pushing the limit. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, record number of cautions for Texas. So yeah. So I mean, we're I mean that's a lot. That's a long day. Yeah. Keeping those keeping those ladies and gentlemen busy up there. Yeah, I guess so. Um, anything else? I think that's it. 
Uh, let me look here and see on the stats. Um, I mentioned Host of Our with its 10th, pl 10th place finish, highest finishing rookie in this one. When, uh, man, who the heck was up front? And I was like, are you kidding me? This person's going to get their first win before um, Ty Gibbs now. <laughs> I don't remember who it was. Oh, um, was how, uh, how about Zane Smith? Zane Smith had a good day. He finished 26, but he had a good day. Yeah, he spun late, too. About was, freaking uh, time he's had a good day. Was Gilliland up there at any point? Is maybe it was Gilliland. Of? Yeah, I think he's it was always Gilliland. hanging around. Yeah, he was. was he did. He led laps. That's who it was. I'm like, yeah, Todd Gilliland's gonna his freaking first win. Freaking Todd Gilliland, <laughs> and I, and he gets he leaves the he leaves the race with six total points, and he was up. I know he found his way up there again. Yeah, I don't know. Huh. Every week that guy's up there. It's crazy. Uh, NASCAR. Xfinity. Justin Haley. Justin Haley was good too. Yeah, for a minute. Yeah. Uh, NASCAR Xfinity Series was in action on Saturday. The Andy's Frozen Custard 300. Um, I thought the race of the weekend. This was the this was the meh race of the weekend. Well, but it had, uh, it had the biggest uh, not meh moment. That's yeah, the sure. finish was pretty incredible. So it was all man, all timer. Sam so Mayer good. tracks down Ryan Sieg for the win. 0. 0.002 seconds. It is uh, the second tied for the second. Um, Closest finish in history in the Xfinity Series. There are three races now. The 1996 Sears Auto Center 250 uh, for Milwaukee Mile, where Buckshot Jones beat Mike, McLaugh Mike McLaughlin. Um, what a, what a couple of zero zero two right there. Right? What I think that was, is that Buckshot's only win, or did he win another? I think that was I it. I don't know. Wasn't Buckshot, it? well, I'll look that up for you. You go ahead and keep going. I'll find out. Uh, the 1999 Touchstone Energy 300 at Talladega Super Speedway had Terry Labonte beat Joe Nemechek by point zero zero two seconds. And of course, this weekend, Sam Mayer and Ryan Sieg, uh, 0 0.002 seconds at Texas. The closest finish in history is at Daytona International Speedway in 2018 when Tyler Reddick beat Elliott Sadler by 0 0.0004 seconds. That finish, had you not, I, I would have fought people to say that. Sieg won that race if they hadn't have shown me the yeah I'll tell you hadn't show me the photo because it looked like he won that dang thing it can't get much closer <laughs> I I mean it that was incredible thank God for electronic scoring I mean like the, the camera I guess showed it but man it was so close <laughs> that was incredible it was an incredible finish and so first of all Ryan Sieg's got to have a win coming right I mean th this guy has been poor guy. so close I know um. It's got to be coming, but the fact that he came back, I mean, when, when mayor got by him, I'm like, oh, it's over. And then yeah. he comes by back and catches him on the last lap uh, on the back stretcher going into three. And it's like, oh man. And he almost they pulled were, off. They were rooting and gouging. For well, he was trying too. to put him in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> he was trying yeah, to rooting put and gouging in the wall. was too polite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, that was man. Yeah. Yeah. What's funny is like we had that incredible finish at Atlanta and in the cup race. And then we got the, I mean, geez, oh, Pete's. Yeah. I don't know. That was good. That was good stuff coming into the dog leg. I, I saw that and I, my, like my jaw dropped. I was like, Oh, that was, you don't expect to see it. And when you do, you know, especially at Texas, like I didn't expect to see that. Right. So, that was great. Um, Justin Allgaier, man, if there's anybody who's good at dominating a race and losing, yeah, him and uh, there's a lot of that going on in the Xfinity series right now. 117 laps led, loses the race, finishes third. At least he got a podium. Yeah. yeah. His so here's a funny stat. Uh Justin Allgaier in that race was that was his 266th career top 10. He is tied for the all-time record <laughs> in the Xfinity series with top 10s with Kyle Busch. Interesting. And the starts are not going to be close. If I look it up, hold on, I'm going to look it up. Because <laughs> if I look at the stats for Kyle Busch's starts, hold on, I, I got to, now, now I'm in it. Kyle Busch has got significantly fewer starts. I, I, yeah, I've got a million tabs open. Actually, that's not as bad as you think. Kyle uh -huh. Busch has 366 career starts. <laughs> He's got 266 career top tens. That's incredible. And, uh, that's an incredible 400... stat. Yeah, 446 starts for Justin Allgaier. So not, not as far off as I thought it would be. Yeah, yeah. Kyle Busch. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> he's he's a maniac. 
He's a maniac. Oh, uh, by the way, since I'm looking at stats, Buckshot Jones does have more than one career victory. Okay. His second victory came a few years later at Loudon, New Hampshire. Hmm. Does he? Here's a. Now I'm on a tangent. Does Buckshot Jones have the most iconic Xfinity Series car that's not a Dale Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt Jr. car? He could. That double zero when I was a kid, like that was that was one of the cars, and it was yeah. an Xfinity Series car for a long time. Yeah, I had but, a friend in college that was a huge Buckshot Jones fan. How did Buckshot Jones get such a following in just the Xfinity Series? I don't is know. what I want to. That name. That it's a great name. Yeah, it's a good name. How did he not turn that into a monster career? I don't know. Well, he had a chance. Yeah, he ran in the cup, didn't he? He got to cup. Yeah, yeah, he got to cup with Billy ran, Jones. Ran and the then, Aquafresh uh, car, didn't he? He did. Yeah. He ran the Aquafresh car. And then he got a job with Petty. Um, he drove the 44. Yeah. And That's that right. was it. He got to, uh, he got into his, his second full-time season with Petty, got fired, and we saw him two more times for James Finch and Michael Waltrip, and he was gone. There's a lot Never of to be seen. There's a lot of careers that have died at Petty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Happy not, 75 years though. Not yeah. <laughs> Not many have gotten out of there alive. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah Bubba. Bubba has. That's Bubba. Bubba got out of there. Eric Jones. Eric Almirola got out of there. Well, I guess Eric Jones is still there. Yeah. Eric Almirola got out of there. Yeah. Uh, oh, AJ Allmendinger had a, had a yeah, stint there. Yeah, Allmendinger yeah. did. Yeah. Hmm. Speaking of Almendinger. Casey Kane, Casey Kane technically did yeah. for a minute. Yeah. Speaking of Almendinger, fourth place finish for him. Finally a good finish for him. Xfinity series. Yep. Yep. Uh, is uh, James, can you bring me down to earth here? Uh oh. Is Sheldon Creed garbage? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's garbage. I don't know what to do with him though. I figured he'd he's have to have a he's win by now in that in that uh, JGR car. He's gonna but he's win. Like, just having a something. trash season. I know he's not. He's not garbage. He's not. Well, good. Thank you. Thank you, because I was like, I didn't understand the appeal with Sheldon Creed. And all of a sudden I started seeing things out of him. And it's like, man, maybe he really is. Maybe he really is something. And then like, he's just, I th- it feels I like he's regressing. He's, well, I think he's going to, he's going to get like a winner too. He's just having a bad year. Yeah. I don't think he's. Bad years are more obvious he, when you're driving for JGR in the Xfinity series than Richard Childress. I, I tell you what though, if he doesn't win this season, it's his odds are going to drop. Oh yeah. Pretty significant. They've got to, he's got to win. You can't survive a winless season at JGR. He'll win somewhere silly like Iowa or something. Yeah. You know, like he'll win a short track and then he'll be, he'll be fine. Maybe I'll win I think a it'll, this it'll, weekend. it'll happen. Yeah. Yeah. It could happen this weekend. Yeah. Yep. Um, trying to think anything else worth mentioning in this uh ninth place finish for jesse love just because i wanted to play the audio clip you like using the lob and then the I sauce do. right behind him yeah Anthony alfredo yeah yep. um yeah i got nothing for this i mean it was it really wasn't that exciting of a race it was the finish this, was, race, this race was the finish justin allgaier dominated this race and then yeah the finish was exciting so yep finish was incredible there you go Right. And then, then we go to the other, the opposite end of the spectrum where a driver dominates the race. And if you look at the stat sheet, you'd be like, man, this race was trash. But it actually was a decent race. The Craft and Truck Series, speedycash.com, 250. Kyle Busch, Rowdy gets himself a win. But, yeah, it's not like he ran away with it. Does he have, uh, does he have one more start? Yes, one more Probably. start. Yeah. He's just... Uh... I mean, he, he, he led... 112 laps of a 167 lap race. He won all three stages, but I mean, really Nick Sanchez was there. Chris Neckis was there again. Corey Heim was up there. I mean, he had to earn this race win. He did. Yeah. And you know, I mean, he wants to win everything. So the fact that he got it, he's got to be feeling pretty good. (laughs) Feeling pretty good about it. Cause it could have got away from him. It definitely could have got away from him. Yeah. It could have. Yeah, but he's, I mean, those Spire trucks are pretty, pretty sporty, man. I mean, they're the KBM trucks, so of course. <laughs> well, and they're, wi- and they're winning a lot. Yeah. They're winning a lot. Um, 
I'm looking really quick. Fox was really uh, excited about the stat that this ties Todd Bodine for most wins at Texas uh, in the truck series. Who cares? But apparently Fox the, thought it was the, amazing. That's the third win for Aspire Truck this season so far. Yeah. Uh, two of those Kyle with Kyle. Has, Kyle has two and Raja got one. Yeah. Um, all on mile and a half, by the way. One of them's Atlanta. Well, technically, but... then it's four because Sanchez got one, too. Oh, yeah. He didn't show up on my. Yeah, he didn't He's show up. He's not on my a Spire list. truck. That's why. Yeah. It's a, it is a Spire truck, but it's not fielded by not, Spire. Yeah, one of the Spire. Yeah. 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 I'm just looking at the ones that Spire actually owns. But yeah, he, you're right. He won Daytona. Yep. So. Yep. You're right. Yep. Um, Let's talk about the Thad Moffat wreck. Did you see this? No, I didn't. I didn't see this one. I'll have to let you. Uh, I'll have to let you soapbox on this one. Yeah, you'll have to go watch the video of it, James, because it's, it right it's really, really interesting. Because he goes into turns one and two, and he goes wide like everybody has been doing, and he saves the truck by steering hard to the left, and so hard to the left that you can visibly see how left the front wheel is turned. Comes right down the track where he is slammed into by. Was it Ingram or Infinger? I can't remember who the heck hit him. Um, but it looked like so. Michael Walter speculated that his, his wheel came off, mm. um, but Thad did not say that his wheel came off. He said something broke and it locked. Um, either something broke on this truck, or Thad Moffat is a disaster <laughs> and really made a <laughs> stupid move. Um, oh, but man, it was one of the weirdest wrecks I've seen in a while. Young, you know. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, I feel like Thad might be where he is because of his family connections. Yeah, that's probably true. That's probably true. I can't find it anywhere. Huh. That's right. I'll well, you have to up. look it up afterwards. It was an yep. interesting wreck. It's doesn't really warrant a ton of a discussion, but it just it was odd. It was really odd, and really bothered me that Fox is talking on the broadcast about that they think the wheel came off and they didn't freaking just ask him the damn question yeah, when he came out of the you, infield I care know. center. Like, uh, what? Yeah. If you don't know, don't say anything. These, this, this Fox group. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can go on. Don't, don't get, I, go I'm not going to get started. I'm not going to get started. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm not. Don't do it. <laughs> we have previous episodes if you want that content. <laughs> right. Yeah. Go back to listen to last week's episode. I'm pretty sure I bitched about in the Fox. week before in the week before yeah, every week. <laughs> um, 66 victories and 174 NASCAR craft and truck series races for Kyle Busch. That winning percentage, courtesy of NASCAR, is 37.9, James. 37.9% wow. winning average, winning percentage. That is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. Yep. Um, it's ridiculous. Second victory and third top 10 finish in 2024 for him. Uh, Connor Jones was the highest finishing rookie in 18th. Um, your points leader is Christian Eckes by two points over Corey Heim. I wish Kyle Busch didn't have that weird 2012 season because he'd have had a win in the truck series every year for 20 years yeah. at this point. Um, yeah, that's not, he's nuts. Blame it on IndyCar. And his average finish the year he didn't win was 2.7. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh man. <sighs> that's it. That's Texas motor speedway. We Texas leave it in the dust. Gone. We're out of the, we're out of the Lone Star state for the rest of the year. See ya. Yeah. Um, not much of the news, James, but we did get news late last week that the CW will broadcast the last eight NASCAR Xfinity series races this season, uh, in lieu of NBC, Rick Allen will be your play by play guy, um, with Steve Letart in the booth. Um, so basically it's Fox that's producing this. It's just going to air on CW NBC, yeah, or NBC, NBC. sorry. NBC, NBC. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, I think it's, um, this is a money play, yeah. right? From CW. Yeah. Yeah, it's it gives them promotion. Um, they get the championship, yeah, which is probably means something to them. So they can st the, C the CW really is trying to build this sports network, and I'm sure they want they're gonna want something that can. Um, I mean, that w we're in the when the championships decided in NASCAR, we are in the thick of college football uh, season, NFL obviously as well. But uh, the CW they they want to be. They want to be that like next tier. So this gets them kind of in the game because they've got there's no reason to watch the CW right now, <laughs> <laughs> right? especially if you like college football. Um, but I know I really forget you, that the CW even exists. Well, and that's the thing is <laughs> if you if you like college football and NASCAR, there's no reason that you can't 
you know, a lot of people multi-screen or whatever. You can have, uh, you can have some racing content on one TV and and watch your college football on the next. So there's there's value for the CW there to have it. And NBC it frees them up, um, a little bit to be a little bit more flexible for their schedule as well. So yeah, I think this was just a, um, I don't know, window dressing a little bit. I think yeah. CW gets to do their thing, and uh, yeah, I mean they're paying a lot of money. Let's get it started. Why not? And I mean, as far as we're aware, CW is not really planning on producing the show anyway, right? I mean, they're just no, they're the it. yeah, they're kind of like the host. Yeah. Um, they're just come come over here, NASCAR and NASCAR is going to be doing most of the production in 2025, if I'm not mistaken. I so. mean, I would assume that'd be great because NASCAR is so good at managing the race from the tower yeah. that I'm sure they can do a great job managing the broadcast. I, and I, from what I understand so far, and I could be wrong about this, but I think NASCAR's CW races will be called from. The NASCAR, oh, I'm, they've I'm got that brand new. I'm pretty sure new, that's the case. Yeah, yeah, they've got that brand new media, you know, media hub that they built, that multi-billion-dollar facility. So yeah, they didn't build it for nothing. <laughs> no, no, they did not. So um, yeah, that's gonna be. It's interesting. To, I, I'm curious to see what the CW thing is gonna really look like. Well, it is interesting too to see that Rick Allen's gonna be we'll calling see. the races because we. I don't know if we even talked about it on the podcast, but. The, the word is that Rick Allen will be replaced after the Olympics by Lee Diffie um, in the NBC booth. So. Yes. Well, it keeps him in the NBC camp. Yeah. I wonder if Rick Allen's going to go to Amazon. I don't know. With with Dale Jr. I don't know. I, I, don't just, know. I just want Alan Bestwick to appear somewhere. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. So. We can dream. Um, only other news item, uh, Denny Hamlin said on his podcast, and I know Jimmy Johnson talked about this this week too. So we'll give Jimmy credit for it as well. Um, NASCAR met with drivers, um, with representatives from, from SMI and Goodyear, uh, Saturday morning at Texas, uh, kind of talking about the future of the package and all that stuff. Um, sounds like they talked about, uh, potential tracks that will be reconfigured in the future or near future as well. Um, Denny wasn't specific. I didn't hear what Jimmy had to say. Um, about that, but um, according to Denny, uh, horsepower off the table. We're not increasing horsepower. Um, we're going to continue to hold out for these manufacturers that are supposedly coming that we haven't seen uh, in the last ten years that we've been waiting for. Yeah, no kidding. Um, so no no horsepower adjustments, but sounds like Goodyear's on on the same page with being more aggressive with tires. Uh, they're planning some tire tests. They talked about that um, going forward. Um, so tracks and tires are where they're going to focus. Um, whatever that means. Well, we'll, we'll take it. Yeah. I mean, it's something, it, it, at least we're get, we're going to give up on arrow because arrow isn't working. No arrow has not fixed stop. the issue. Yeah. No, I know. And the, the horsepower thing is just not going to happen for us either. Yeah. Unfortunately. So yeah, let's focus on the tires. Let's get that going. Um, it sounds to me too like we're not going to be selling any charters until later because we don't know what that's going to look like. Yeah, Is that kind of what we're at. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, obviously we don't. You don't know the value of them until we know whether they're they exist. Yeah, and <laughs> way Jimmy was talking, we're not going to know that until late in the year. At this point, I mean, it. I guess it depends on how how bad somebody wants out and how much will somebody's willing to pay before the price goes up or down. You yeah, know? I guess you're right. Yeah. So, and and how quick you want to be ready for next season. Yep. So, um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm. We're up in the air with a lot of this, aren't we? It's yeah. Just gonna be kind of well, kind of hope and pray, I guess. Need to get this agreement signed. I wonder how much it's gonna hold up uh, schedule announcements because we've we've had next year's schedule by this point before. Yeah, we have. F1 not just not recently. Schedule too. No, no, but um, F1 now it's their 2025 schedule already, so yeah, they're, you know, um, planning ahead. So yeah, I, the they got to get this thing, they got to get this thing figured out. Yeah, they do. It's it's getting late. The in longer now. it goes, the worse it's gonna get. So. Yep. Yep. And that's it. That's all we got for news, James. News is on. Gotta love all these right. Monday shows. <laughs> Monday shows short on the news. Yep. That's all right. Um, but this weekend we go to my favorite track on the schedule. We go to Talladega Super Speedway. Oh man! NASCAR Cup Series in action on Sunday. 
Geico 500, 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, NASCAR Xfinity Series in action on Saturday, the Egg Pro 300, Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern. The Craftsman Truck Series is off this weekend, so just the two series in action. ARC is also in action this weekend at Talladega. Oh, God. Yeah. I was going to ask. That that yeah. race scares me always, every year. But, uh, yep. but yeah. Um, especially now. I mean, they've the, the field is bigger now again, and, and they're competitive. So it'll be interesting to see what sort of pack racing and craziness we get in the ARCA race at Talladega this weekend. Yep. Um, James, I picked first last week, so you get first pick for your picks this weekend at Dega. Who do you got? Oh, man. Uh, well, I'll make it easy on you. Give me Ryan Blaney. Yeah, that was my pick, too. <laughs> <laughs> did I pick um, Did I pick Tyler Reddick last week? Who did, did you pick last week? I'm going to look it up really quick. I know I picked Ross Chastain. Well, you were looking good there until yeah. the last lap. Yeah. No, I had William. No, I had William Byron. Did you? Oops. Well, hmm. all right. Um, since that you, worked out for both of us. <laughs> since you took Ryan Blaney, I'm going to go Denny Hamlin as my pick this weekend. I get, yeah, I can't go around there. Yeah. I'm not picking Brad around. again. I know. Maybe he'll win if I don't pick him. I'm going to stay away from him. Yeah. <laughs> Joey's going to be around. I mean, yeah. Ross it's, will be around. It's Talladega. The same guys yeah. will be up there and somebody who you're not expecting will win. Trying to think of anybody who's like, like Byron... Expect Byron to be around. Expect Chase to be around. Um, anybody who, like, is there anybody out there who you think, like, we haven't heard from yet who could steal the show? Like, we didn't expect Daniel Suarez to win Atlanta. Yeah, no, I don't know that there's any anybody who'd surprise me. I mean, somebody like Todd Gillen I expect to do well, but I expect it, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, Eric Jones probably will do oh, well. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, he could do it. Gregson, yep. maybe Gregson's won on super speedways in the yeah, Xfinity Gregson series. maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly a race that everybody's even. So, yeah, I don't know. Alex Bowman. I mean, we didn't say Kyle Busch. He won this race a year ago. That's true. Yeah. Kyle's won. So, yeah. I mean, let's see. There's going to be what? 38 cars in the field. So probably about 37 of them had a shot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's just the. It's funny. Like you go to Talladega and Daytona, and the familiar characters are always there. Chris Busher, he'll be up there. Yeah. Um. You know, those guys are. It's just that. You know, those guys always seem to figure it out. It's yeah. definitely. There's a lot of luck involved in Talladega and Daytona, but the skill set is still high, very high level. Yeah, it is definitely. It's just a different skill set, but it. Yeah, yep. it's definitely still very high. Yep. Um. How do. Uh... I don't want to talk about fantasy, James. How'd fantasy go this week? I'm I'm still I'm still salty. <laughs> well, there was some scoring uh, updates that needed to be made, and at one point you had finished in second. Yeah. Well, uh, here's the thing. I still am pretty confident I would have won the damn race if it wouldn't have been for William Byron. So it was a bad race for everybody. Um, nobody scored over 200. I but mean, I had Kyle, funny part I had is, Kyle Larson too, so that didn't help. Yeah, I had to bench him. Uh, I benched him for Bubba, so I didn't make a lot of uh, didn't make a lot of headway there. Um, the funny thing is, is you had lost by one point during live scoring, and then it refreshed, and I lost by one point. Yeah. <laughs> so you fell from second to seventh. I moved up. I don't know. From, I understand I think, how the hell I I dropped six positions. I don't know why the scoring had you that high. I don't know what Freaking happened. What co- I, whatever cost you thirty points. I don't. We're anyway. like we're like last night is like who got disqualified, but nobody did. Right, that's what I said. <laughs> well, you you lost. Um, what you have like one eighty nine or something? I don't so, remember. Yeah, you I lost didn't... like twelve points. It must have been the Ross Chastain thing. It's the only thing I can think of. But yeah, um, I almost got my third win of the year. I guess uh, Cole Custer's last stand gets the win by one. I get second, and I beat Watermelon James. <laughs> Thank God, but he got third or she, he or she. I I always say he. It's he or right. she. I don't know who it is. Uh, Watermelon James though, nipping at my heels every week. Um, that jerk. Uh, overall standings, Team Justin. It's tight, man. Team Justin's first. Cole Custer second. Uh, Mickey Elliott is third. Uh, Eric, you're still ahead of me though. Seventeen oh nine. You're sixth. I'm right behind uh, Baron Speedway right there. So we're all bunched up. Um, it's pretty much. We're all Talladega could could settle some things here for us. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Fantasy leagues drive me nuts. 
Um, I do want to just tell you how professional that I am, James, because there have oh, been man. like three goals scored, and this game has been violent. And oh. I've, I've maintained my composure through this entire You're podcast. You're doing great, man. You're doing great. Well, we got to get you out of here. We're almost then. done, and I can watch most of the third period. That's so. right. That's Spir- right. The Spirit go are leading, yeah. though. My team's leading, so we're good. That's good. Good right go now. Go say go, Spirit. There you go. Um, checkered flags, James. Any checkered flags this week? Oh, I was listening to – yeah, I do. Uh, PRN's broadcast, okay. and they brought Cole Custer in to do the whole race, and I thought oh. he did a really good job. Interesting. Oh, you know, I'm glad I, you I didn't mentioned know Cole that. Custer was calling races. Interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah. Since you mentioned that, I want to yeah. go back. So, to yeah, the, I thought – shout out to Cole Custer. I want to go back to the Xfinity Series race, James. Oops. Yeah. Because uh, I wanted to ask what you thought of Ross Chastain in the booth for the Xfinity race. Did you watch it? I didn't watch most of it. I knew he was up there with Joey. Um, was he good? He was He was good. He talked too much, but he was good. So I, I thought he, he was excited. I was happy. He gets excited. There's a clip. Uh, I probably shouldn't even say it. There's a clip making the rounds of Joey Logano saying a word that he didn't mean to say. Oh, no. Uh, during the broadcast. I'll just leave it there. I'm not going to go any farther. <laughs> I think I might know the word. I think I remember it happening, actually. Yeah, he didn't mean to say it. It's yeah. not his fault. Yeah, I think I but, know exactly what word you're talking about. Yeah, I was yeah. like, that was the one thing that's, I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> he didn't mean to say it. Give him a break. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, that I saw that. That is um, that is not my checkered flag, though. I want to give my checkered flag to the race winner, Chase Elliott, but not because he won the race. I want to give him the checkered flag for doing the Polish victory lap after his win. It completely glossed oh i didn't i completely missed the fact that he's driving the hooters car wins the first race for hooters since alan kawicki won the last time in hooters and does the polish victory years. lap in honor yep. of kawicki at the end of the race that was incredible yep yep very cool it was cool yeah it was a cool like and it was a big moment for him getting back to victory lane and hit, for him to take a second to tap into our history yeah um very yeah very well done um, I, he said he was a big fan of Colwicky and I had to look it up. Uh, he was born in 1995 Yeah, <laughs> and that made me feel super old. Cause I remember Alan. Right. Uh, yeah. Chase well, wasn't even around. Alan cost his dad a championship, man. It was close. Darn right he did. He went and took it from him. Yeah. The Underbird. Yeah. Yep. So, but very, very cool tribute. And I didn't, I mean, I, I guess I didn't realize that Hooters hadn't won a race yet. Cause Elliot's led with that, Hoot- that Hooters car. Um, yeah. but hadn't gotten the win with it yet. And then, uh, Kyle Bush mentioned in the truck series race too, Realtree, that was their first victory as a primary sponsor, which is surprising as well. Oh man. So, yep. Yep. That's a good one. Uh, how about black flags? Any black flags this week, James? Uh, yeah, well not Fox, but Clinton Boyer. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Reddick had that really bad pit stop. Uh, uh-huh. And uh, I guess I should give Clint uh, credit for this. He all of a sudden he just yells out, "My bad! This is uh, this one's on me." He passed Hamlin because <laughs> that was like a big moment in the race. And I thought, "Oh dang, poor poor Clint. He's trying." <laughs> well, he was hungover and struggling on Sunday because he went to the uh, what the heck do they call it the the stock house out in Texas apparently. Oh my god. Um. Oh my God! He, Harvick was giving him a hard time in the booth, so I think he, I think he was having a rough time on Sunday. Well, he didn't look like he was doing very good eating the ice cream <laughs> late, later. He's probably trying to keep it down. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Don't change. Yes, Don't change, no. Man. Keep, Just keep... be you. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, my black flag is going to go to William Byron for screwing up my fantasy uh, and wrecking <laughs> Ross Chastain on the last lap for yeah. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Damn you! He Byron. Almost had a second place. I know. I know. Uh, I think nobody's got more top two finishes than me in the whole league this year, and I'm just barred back there because <laughs> I can't – I have no consistency. No consistency at all. Yeah. It's terrible. Uh, anything else, James, I before we head thing. on out of here? I just hate the fantasy league. I I'm with you it. 100%. I don't know why we keep doing the damn thing. damn thing. I don't know. <laughs> People like it. <sighs> All righty, sir. Sucks. I guess that's it, huh? All right. <laughs> go watch your go watch your hockey, man. <laughs> well, let me end the show first. Uh, James, where can Close they, this out, buddy. Where, where can they out. find you on social media if they want to hit you up during the week? At James Cush on Twitter. You can find me at T Super Speedway on Twitter. You can find the podcast on Facebook at Facebook.com slash the Super Speedway. Our website is the Superspeedway.com. You can find uh, the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, 
Amazon Music, Audible, and iHeartRadio, and soon to be YouTube as well. Um, not video. We won't have video on YouTube, at least not yet. Um, but it is coming. So we added to a few new platforms. So if you listen on other platforms, you should be able to hear it there. Um, wherever you find us today, we hope you subscribe and continue to listen. And don't forget, if you go to anchor.fm slash the super speedway, you can leave us an audio message and we might just play it on the show. NASCAR Xfinity Series and NASCAR Cup Series head to Talladega Super Speedway this weekend. The Xfinity Series in action on Saturday at 4 p.m. The Cup Series in action on Sunday at 3 p.m. We'll be back next week to break it all down and go over all the excitement that comes from Talladega Super Speedway. Until then, everybody, let's go racing. (laughs) 